Hello and welcome to Commodity Champions. I'm Anisha Gupta. Amid heightened geopolitical tensions and uncertainty of a full-fledged war breaking out, safe haven investments like gold and silver have shot up. The gold prices are up by 27% in 2024 till time, hitting all-time highs in various countries like US, India, Japan, China and many others. In case of India, it's a prime time for gold as festive season kicks in as well. The prices are expected to rise significantly ahead of Diwali. Not just gold, even silver has been performing rather well. In fact, it has outperformed all other metals and various other commodities as well. So when we look at uh, when we are within Navratri and counting days away from the Shara and uh, Diwali, how is the mood really on ground and what are the jewellery markets telling us? To take this discussion forward is Kishore Ronwal of Anmol Jewellers and Mr. Vargiza Lukas, is Managing Director of Jossa Lukas. Gentlemen, hi, thank you so much for joining us. Mr. Uh, Lukas, to you first and with the gold prices at an all-time highs, what is your sense, what is the kind of impact that you're looking at into the markets and sales? Yes. As you know, this uh, gold price today, we are uh, almost around 7,120, which is our highest ever been uh, in the history of India. And uh, for last two weeks, there was a little slowness entirely because of the offsets and the rate high. But uh, starting from Navaratri, maybe from yesterday, there were a lot of uh, promotions coming up in the uh, media regarding uh, uh, promotions, which uh, give more offers to the customers and uh, Navaratri also uh, started from yesterday. So there was a less demand for last two weeks, but we are positive that the customers will soon come back to the jewelries and spend more on this festival season of buying jewelry, the Navaratri, the Diwali. So our expectations are uh, high. For, we are all ready with the latest design because we do have a lot of jewelry shows passed one month, everyone is stocked up with a latest design and getting ready to uh, welcome all customers back to the store, uh, store to have these special celebrations in buying jewellery. Oh, well, I'm sure of that. And I do understand that various festivals have been held in across India, more so in the southern part of the country. Uh, and as you said, there have been various uh, exhibitions as well. So you are holding a lot of designs at this point in time. When it comes yeah. to South dominating the buying, are we still looking at higher numbers for southern India vis-a-vis -vis other part of the country? See, we are expecting around at least 25, 30% to increase in the sales during this Diwali season, where the sh shopping or jewelry shopping are peak during Dentera, before the Diwali and Navaratri, these are the time. Also, there are wedding season, which is coming up after Diwali. So our expectation uh, among all the jewelries in South are very high, and there is a, a good number of inquiries coming up uh, on uh, from the customers as they have been waiting for to buy during the season and offers. So we are expecting at least 25, 30% and ready to uh, have a sales in coming season. Mm. Mr. Aluka, also when it comes to gold versus diamond, and because the gold prices have hit an all-time highs in that sense, are you also looking at diamond now seeping in because the diamond prices are off its highs? Yes. There are some inquiries, like uh, even 18 karat jewellery is picking up because there is slight uh, reduction in the gold price. We do have a lot of designs which is coming in 18 karat jewellery. Even diamond jewellery, there are gifting jewellery, diamond jewellery, which is using for the wedding, gifting. So few customers who prefer to have uh, gold jewellery when it is higher, they also look into buying diamond jewellery, different occasions, gifting. So diamond jewellery is also picking up. But first preference always comes to gold because uh, every South Indian population looking into buy jewellery as an asset and even an investment, which always uh, gives more return and the liquidity value. So. With the gold jewellery, even diamond, diamond jewellery is also catching up. Even customers are looking into silver jewellery, which is also picking up in the South market. Oh, absolutely, yes. Uh, also, Mr. Alukas, there's a lot of expansions uh, happening within the sector as well. So even as gold prices are at all-time highs, but as you said, this is festivities, and then you have so many wedding season coming in also after the Diwali. Uh, how are you looking at jewellery as an industry right now? Uh, there's, there's lots going, and there's a lot of excitement as well, expansions as well, new players coming into the market. How, how would you judge the industry at this point? As we are basically in the south, uh, we do have all over the south, like Kerala, Karnataka, Tamil Nadu, Andhra. But still, we feel that, uh, there are a lot of 
uh, other areas like two tire, three tire, which have more potential for buying uh, jewelry. So our uh, plan to add more stores in coming years, plus the gold price has gone up, as you said, but we always looking to have a such an inventory like lightweight jewelry, which is more selling among uh, the customers who are looking to the price point, design point. So we are all making an experiment or we are creating a database of uh, inventories, which one has been more liked by the customers and more are repeated by us. So our expansion mode as India is so big and the population is so big, so always India is also growing. So we feel that more and more customers to buy more and more gold and even uh, we expect more expansion in the coming uh, years in the south with better uh, return in the sales in the coming days. Okay. Uh, one more question, and this is clearly about Jossa Lukas then, and what are your yes. plans going forward? As you said, there are more expansion plans, more stores coming into picture as well. What is your uh, portfolio like right now? As you said, gold is doing great, so is diamond. Silver jewellery seems to be picking up as well. So going forward, if you have to look for next three or five years, what is Jossa Lukas' plans? Yeah, as of now, we are with 60 showrooms in South. Our aim is to reach 100 stores, so we are still looking to expand all over in the south, even to two tire, three tire. We are almost more than um, uh, 10,000 crore uh, 10 over company, which we have already achieved from last year. So our expansion is uh, to reach into an under store, uh, 100 numbers, and uh, we also have a growth uh, of around 20-25% uh, in the revenue. So our uh, basically in uh, five years we could reach 100 stores. Pan uh, South India. That was our uh, five-year plan. What we are looking into. We are still betting on uh, more returns and uh, expansion, and we see that Aluka, India is always growing. Mr. Alukas, in that sense, is IPO in planning as well? We still uh, are in uh, uh, homework of how we can uh, come up. Like uh, as of now, uh, we have on organic growth, but in case. If there are some inquiry on PE funding, and if we are in a stage where we are into or when we are able to be a sellable, uh, then we will look into the options uh, depending on the market situations. All right, absolutely. So those are big plans going forward for Jossa Lukas there. Well, that's about gold and diamond, but silver, remember, also hit an all-time high in the month of September itself. And as uh, Mr. Alukas was pointing out, that silver also seems to be picking up quite strongly in sense of jewellery. Of course, industrial demand has been on the stronger side as well. But as investment, as statues, and there's so many more ways of gifting in silver when it comes around the is what really picks up. Mr. Kishore Runwal is with us. Uh, Mr. Runwal, what's your sense on with the current prices? Do you see a strong demand for silver gifting continuing this Diwali? Uh, thank you, Manisha Ji. Uh, seeing the trend now, August had a very high imports in India, silver. Uh, and now whatever we are seeing in the starting month of October, already the stores are now uh, getting full with uh, retail customers buying for the festival seasons and the uh, marriage which is coming. We have highest marriages in the month of December. Uh, seeing this uh, potential, gold and silver markets, already sales are going to go up very high. And due to this reason, uh, every counter uh, now from October 3, after the Pitra Paksh is over, uh, we see the auspicious days have started. And due to this, we see a very huge customers coming in in retail stores. Everyone are getting good sales from what reports we are receiving from October 3rd. Uh, we are uh, sure that in coming uh, months in this Diwali and in the month of December, which has got the highest marriages, we see a very good sales for the retail outlets in gold and silver. Mm. When it comes to silver, Mr. Runwal, is there a number that you're putting out on what kind of higher sales can we anticipate as compared to last year's quarter? Uh, Manisha ji, if you see, uh, silver is already 25% hike in last festival season with the rates if you compare somewhere near 72, 75 and now we are already touching 95, 96. The local markets today are showing 95,000 as of today. If you see, the coming days we see around about everyone, the buzz is going off that the silver uh, metal is going to touch nearly 1 lakh rupees. Mm. So everyone is waiting for this occasion and uh, we see uh, really a very good uh, sales back to back and uh, I, I see a 7% growth already uh, in this sector of silver industry. Let it be investment, let it be uh, 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 what you call uh, articles or jewellery. We see a 7% hike of sales this year.
Mm. Mr. Nawal, that really was my next question. So how is the buying really happening? As you said, investment is on the stronger side. We have seen that via silver ETFs also. But when it comes to silver buying uh, in the physical markets, is it more to do with bars and coins or jewelry or silver artifacts? Uh, as the rates are going up, customers are getting faith in this uh, silver shine metal. People uh, are putting investments in, let it be in bullion, let it be in bars and let it be in coins. Even articles, they consider it as an uh, investment because there is no much loss. If they don't require it at the point, it gets melted and again it gets converted into bar. So uh, people are showing interest in uh, three categories, let it be in bars, bullion or uh, articles. Mr. Runwal, uh, a lot of uh, exchange gold and silver also seems to be coming into the market. The number is not very high because, as you said, people still expect that the prices will go higher from here. What is the exchange percentage? Have you seen that at all pick up? Ex ex uh, exchange percentage as of in local markets, if you compare to my stores and uh, what others I speak to, uh, it's less. It is not that high that people are taking out their old uh, silver articles or jewelry and exchanging it uh, to the new. People are keeping it, waiting for the rates to go up. If the rates go up, we will surely see uh, people coming in, getting their old articles, old articles, getting it melted, making it in conversion of bars and then selling in the market. But they are still waiting for the jump. I think 1 lakh, uh, if we touch 100%, uh, you will see more uh, old uh, jewellery and articles coming in market for sales. All right. So not too much of sale of old jewellery is coming into the market. Uh, if any at all, it is coming in as an exchange. Thank you so much, Mr. Varghese and Mr. Runwal, for joining us and taking us through across uh, precious metal as a sector where we've talked about gold and diamond and silver, where the expectations are quite strong for this quarter in sense of buying from the Indian markets, even as the prices are hitting record highs. With that, we'll go for a very short break, but don't go anywhere because when we come back, we'll talk the platinum jewellery market with Vaishali Banerjee and we'll also speak to the Bollywood star Sonam Kapoor on what she thinks or she does during these festivities. Welcome back. Let's shift focus now to platinum. The prices are hovering around $1,000 an ounce. The jewelry segment accounts for 23 to 30 percent of the total annual platinum demand. Joining us now to discuss the outlook on platinum is Vaishali Banerjee, MD Platinum Guild International. Thank you so much, Vaishali, for joining us. And even as the gold prices hit all time highs, is that really helping platinum? Because the prices are quite on the lower side in comparison. It hasn't been very great month, the month of September for various buyers. But do you think for platinum, this quarter could really be better? Platinum? But the price differential is a real boost to demand and we are seeing that play out. Quarter three for us has not been bad at all. We were, we've seen a plus 15%. So it's been a strong quarter. Uh, quarter four, our expectations are also good. Maybe similar in the similar range. This is in terms of uh, retail. So I think um, we're looking forward to a strong quarter. And uh, let's see how it plays out. The all-time high gold prices actually have helped platinum as a jewellery go higher. But keeping gold aside, how has the penetration for platinum been for the Indian market until now? So penetration is actually growing. Okay, so we started as, uh, as you might know, we started with Metro Markets and Tier 1. Now, if I look at distribution, around 60% is... Uh, still in metros and tier one, but 30% has moved into tier two. Now 10% of our distribution has also gone into tier three cities. So I think that is showing the adoption rate for platinum. Um, we are close to about 2000 uh, doors now that are uh, looking at platinum. So that I think we added around 200 to 50 new doors this year. So I think the adoption is uh, going hand in hand with the penetration. So how is the overall festival season looking like to you? What are the partner tie-ups that you're looking at? As you said, 2,000 doors is what you're into right now, but which categories do you see growing? 
for us, all three categories are growing, the, whether it's the rings, which is actually the largest uh, penetration is on the back of the love bands category, which is your uh, commitment rings. So those are, uh, that's a very, very, very strong uh, segment for us. Uh, women's jewelry is also uh, growing because it's a very young segment. And um, of course, we have dominantly, uh, predominantly a women's jewelry market. For us, the fastest growing segment uh, is the men's segment. It is the brand, the branded segment that we had launched in 2019, and we're seeing a lot of interest uh, behind that. Um, this, uh, this for the season, we have partnered with um, Mahinder Singh Dhoni, and we've got a very unique collaboration in place where we've got a, a signed edition in terms of product. So it, his signature is there on the piece of jewelry. So it is really a collection that we are very, very excited about because it, um, it really is an honor to collaborate and associate with, uh, with him. And we are seeing a lot of interest within all our partners to keep this range. And uh, in fact, our entire season's campaign for it has already just begun. All right. I'm trying to think if MS Dhoni wears a lot of jewellery, Vaishali, but why MS Dhoni, if I may ask? I think it's about a questioning of, it's a question of aligning values, Manisha, because if you look at it, um, the men of platinum as a brand has always defined uh, our success. It has defined who it is based on values. And the values um, are completely aligned to MS Dhoni, whether you talk about resilience, authenticity, leadership, empathy, all that we think defines character. And uh, that's what the brand is about. That's what MS Dhoni is about. And therefore, uh, we thought it was a perfect kind of collaboration because one talks to the other. All right. When it comes to the Indian markets, then, Vaishali, are you also looking to introduce more products as we go ahead in India, especially during these festivities? Absolutely. I think we are just a, we are a very young category in, in such an evolved, mature jewellery market. So we, will, we always look at opportunities and we see what is it that uh, Platinum can own in this vast uh, arena of jewellery. And I think uh, there's many, many more opportunities out there. Thank you so much for that, Vaishali. That was all about the platinum opportunity in the Indian markets during these festivities. Well, is here and Zoya, the luxury jewellery brand from the house of Tata, has launched a new collection called Alive with the brand ambassador, Sonam Kapoor. She's joining us now with more on her takeoff of jewellery. Sonam, hi, thank you so much for joining us. First of all, your association with Zoya, what makes you gel associate with Zoya? I think it's, uh, first of all, uh, for me, I only become a brand ambassador for any brand if it resonates with me and if it's something that I would wear myself or use myself. Um, you know, and that's why there's always such high recall when it comes to brands that I've been associated with. Um, it's, it's just because it's authentic to me. So Zoya is uh, obviously beautiful jewelry, good quality jewelry. The value of the natural stones and diamonds that they use is incredible. They have their own certification. And you know, so the quality is obviously amazing, but what's even more brilliant is the design. And it's a brand that is run by women. And uh, the, the head designer for Zoya is a woman as well. And for me, that is very, very important. You know, um, I, I, I'm doing, I, I'm very picky about my brands and I'm very picky about the work that I do, uh, especially now. So it's, it's important that I do things that are of quality and uh, Zoya is that. So now also the gold prices are at an all-time high. Do you look at gold jewellery as an investment or is it a more of a luxury thing for you? Of course, you know, um, it, it's very important, uh, especially when it's a high value item. It's very important to be very um, careful about how you spend your money. And for generations, our families have been buying jewellery 
not only as something that you know we can wear but also as investments because jewelry doesn't especially when you're buying you know real jewelry it doesn't lose its value it kind of retains its value or the value increases also is there a particular jewelry prize that you cherish or have memories attached to you know i think it's my engagement ring um i um it's actually a, a simple band that my husband got for me it was just uh, you know besides the uh, you know diamond that my in-laws you know usually you have you have that ceremony in in our culture where you have a mangni ceremony which is very different but when i got engaged in a very it's a, it's a it's a western concept to have someone go down on their knees and kind of uh, you know ask you to marry them so my husband actually proposed to me with a very simple um ring actually it was just it was just an invis- invisible set of diamonds uh very tiny very thin very simple and very beautiful and um uh, it's not the most expensive piece of jewelry that i own but it is my most precious uh, piece of jewelry that i own and um so for me that is like the best piece of jewelry that i have there's usually so some some jewelry that's passed on in the family across generation the something that comes in from elders what is that piece for you so the jewelry piece that i wore for my wedding um was actually for the my my uh, when i was the anuradha vakil you know where during my anand karj was a uh, it's it was a beautiful art that my father had actually bought for my mother uh, when she turned 50 um as a, as a birthday present and he was shooting in rajasthan and he bought it you know he bought it it was from one of the royal families and uh, he bought it for her and my mom said you know my elder daughter has a long neck and it'll only look beautiful on her so this is for her and uh, you know 15 years later i wore it at my wedding and it, it's something that my mom it was a gift my father gave my mother and my mother gave that to me also what do festivals mean to you i mean every time there's a festival like diwali do you add gold and silver to your collection during these times yes of course i i do do that in fact uh, there was a beautiful uh, collection that i first endorsed uh, where uh, uh, in zoya which was called my embrace and they have these uh, this beautiful bracelet uh, they they were very generous they gifted me a pair of earrings um and i wanted the matching bracelet and um I I you know I I got that for myself uh, uh and I and I love that and I'm really grateful for that piece of jewelry um you know because I I know that you know it, it's nice and now obviously this is a beautiful new collection that Zoya has got which is called Alive and uh they have uh this very like easy to wear aquamarine um blue um like very like just a stone with this new cut that they have which is called the bloom cut and it's just like a stone on a piece of chain and i thought it was really easy to wear with white shirt like white shirt and jeans and so once shaad is over i'm going to pick it up for myself thank you so much for that sonam and happy festivities to you as well well that's about what gold silver platinum diamond jadao all of those markets are looking forward to in sense of these festivities as i said there are days that we are counting to diwali and the new years and then the wedding season the highest number of weddings are happening in december this time around and this is what the markets are telling us on in sense of sales and purchases but with that that's all the time that we have on commodity champions thank you for watching